Hello, welcome back to Charles Cohen and Bullion Dealer YouTube channel. I'm going to hit that subscribe and like button if you enjoy the videos. I'm Ben, a customer care assistant, and in this video we're going to be following on from the previous one where backyard bullion sent us a half sovereign. In the past as well, they sent us some small items of gold jewellery. A small pendant, a little cross, a ring, a peanut. Who can say for sure? But we're going to give them a test on our Sigma tester, which will work for an initial test, but you need to know the purity of the gold to test them properly. So after this, we're probably going to have to take them over to the Niton tester in the front office and have a proper go. So first item we're going to check is this pendant, which doesn't say, as far as I can tell, any hallmark gold content. So we'll give it a quick weigh on the scales. 7.6 grams. The machine is currently set to 8 grams, so that's close enough accuracy. It's set to gold pure right now. You've got a choice of metals by that button. So I'm going to try pure and see how it comes out. Close to pure gold? Not quite there. If I shift it down to 22 carat, too much the other way. So it's more pure than 22 carat, but not quite 24. I'll take it to the night on test to have a proper go, but we've got an idea now at least. This cross on the back of it, hallmark, which I can't read, I will admit, and it says 14k. So for this one, the weight is 2 grams, so I'll reset that now. And 14 carat, the Sigma tester will only go down to 14 carat, conveniently. So if I try it 14 carat with the balance being silver, slightly more pure according to this. If I try it 14 carat with a bit of silver in the balance copper, closer. We'll need to go to proper test on the night on tester again, but 14 carat doesn't seem far off it. The ring doesn't appear to have a hallmark as such. It does say 9CT inside the band, but not in a hallmark manner. And since the machine only goes down to 14 carat, no point in trying to test that on the Sigma tester. As for this, I'm not sure, monkey nut, peanut, gourd, something. No hallmark on it, so I wouldn't know quite what to do to test it. The weight of it is only 1.6 grams, so 1.6, let's have a test. But it won't go under that marker, and for the smaller ones they need to fit under, and in here it won't fill the black circle, so it's not going to do a lot of good for us. But the fact it came out as a higher test does mean it's higher than 14 carat. Testing is higher than pure, so that's just the unreliable readings. Testing with a little scanner wand. It's giving an accurate reading. It says it's a little more than pure, but again, that's because of the size of it. It's very hard to get a full reading, so we'll take that to the night on tester as well and see what it comes up with it. So I've got the items all here ready for testing on the night on tester. So first one, the pendant, which around 24 carat we thought, so let's have a go. So result on this one, gold plate not detected, always a good sign, and AU 99.9, .9, so it is testing around 24 carat pure gold. It'll wibble a little bit on gold plate, not gold plate, for the first few seconds. When it goes on a bit longer, it gets a better reading and can say for sure. So this is coming out with nearly 24 carat. Go to 30 seconds, then flip it over, try the other side. But I would be happy with that 24 carat myself now. But I'll test the other side just to make sure. Coming out with the same consistent reading, so I'm happy to say this is 24 carat pendant. No problem there. Next one is this little cross, uh, which has the 14k stamp on the back of it. So I'll test on the flat side first, it's got a better flat surface to test on. And this is coming out as 12.2 hmm, carat. Not the 14 carat it said on it. And although sometimes you might expect a little bit under the carat stamped, 12, or well, under 12 and a half, too low to really be classed as a 14 carat piece of jewellery. I'll pop over the other side just to test that as well there. So flipping the thing over now, 
and at the side of it, they do tend on the Nikon tester to come out 24 carat for the first half second and then filter down. But a little bit of zinc on this side, just on the figure on the crucifix, but not unknown for it. The reason this didn't come out accurately, I think, for the 14 carat gold on the initial test on the Sigma is because it either tests for balanced silver or 4% silver and the rest copper. Because this is out of those measurements, different conductivity, Sigma tester wouldn't give you an accurate reading. So this time for the 9 carat ring, a bit damaged when it was, I'm not sure removed, but it looks like pliers to me. But we'll put it on. I'll try and stand it up, if it'll stand, to get the best flat surface contact. A slightly better reading that way, I feel. There you go. And it is coming out as gold plate not detected. Always good. 8.9 carat gold, which is 37.4 with a half percent variation. That's absolutely fine. That could go up to 9 carat gold with a bit. And it just then popped on. So 39% copper, 37 gold, 18% silver, and 5% zinc. I'd be pretty happy for this as a nine carat ring. Last one is, honestly, if you have a comment, an idea what this is, put it on the video, just tell me what you think this picture is. I'm gonna say the monkey nut. On it goes. It is quite thin, like a hollow earring or pendant, so, may test slightly differently, but yeah. Okay, gold plate not detected, so it's thick enough for that at least. 99.6 gold, bit of silver, bit of copper, not to be unexpected really for it. It's not quite 24 carat purity, but it's very close. So maybe 24 carat, maybe would be classed as a little lower if it came to sale, but no, that tests nice and cleanly. Hello, I'm Lawrence Jard. Ben has already uh, done a very good job working through all the four items and explaining quite clearly what our main process is and what our thoughts are on the items. So I won't try and uh, replicate that. And there is a benefit that uh, Ben speaks probably more slowly and certainly more clearly than I do, so we shouldn't get quite as many complaints about me mumbling, except now, and I'll try not to mumble. But we are in our rather echoey studio. As you see, Ben's used a Sigma Pro machine, and we'll show you pictures of it, and also a Niton XRS desktop machine. We do multiple tests on things, and those two bits of equipment between them are very good, but there's still no substitute for the human eye and the human brain, uh, because what we also do is we examine the item for marks, such as hallmarks, and for other telltale signs to see what we think about them. Things like weighing them um, does also help to some extent and observations um, such as something being hollow are also interesting. It's also um, something I got to, probably too involved in looking at what the symbols were on the first item. So the first item that, that Ben checked was the Chinese pendant and when I first looked at it I thought oh is it Chinese is it Japanese I'm not quite sure um, Fortunately we can um, for those who can't read kanji and don't know other than um, Chinese or Japanese symbols uh, Google Lens works really well and it tells us that the um, the symbol on one side means well, it various it could be um, blessing or it could be good fortune in fact it's the it's the ca Chinese character Fu Fu if that's not being implied and don't take that the wrong way um, so it can mean good luck good fortune and the um, things in the corner of that that look like flying bats are apparently stylized dragons which are also uh, generally very lucky in Chinese unless um, one actually catches you and then you need St. George to the rescue. Um, and on the other side, there's a whole lot of Chinese inscription and there's a symbol there of a bird, which is a crane. And it is, is it flying or is it standing on? It looks like it's just taking off from a, basically a pine tree. It doesn't look like a pine tree to me, but apparently that's what it is. 
Cranes and pine trees go together in Chinese tradition or folklore, signifying uh, longevity and uh, a long, healthy life. So, and the symbols or the writing above them, now what does that say? We got various translations of that using um, Google Translate or Lens, but one of them is the pine and the crane lengthen the life, but there are other explanations. Anybody interested further can, can look into that. Uh, there's no one other indication on it of what the metal content it is. It looks like it's high carat gold, as, as we found out. It tests close to, but not quite, 24 carat. It's quite interesting. Uh, we posted um, a question about that on, on, and some information on uh, the Silver Forum. And if anybody wants to discuss it further, you can also have a look there. And we will eventually discuss the other items there in some more detail. That highlights the point that we don't just use the equipment we've got and testing equipment. We actually look at things and we actually think about things and uh, that helps in the, uh, in the overall uh, checks and tests. Uh, the next thing we've described as a cross somewhere but it's not, it's a crucifix. So we tried to decipher the, um, the Chinese writing on the back of the crucifix and apart from seeming to say 14K, uh, we couldn't work out the rest. But again, we used Google Translate or Lens. And what did that tell us? Uh, it, it meant Chao Tai Fuk, whatever the Fuk that means. Oh, apparently it means look, class and prosperity or words to that effect. Uh, so now we know. Um, unfortunately, it's not actually 14 carat that it seemed to be from the uh, Sigma. The nine carat gold ring, yeah, it's not hallmarked. Uh, it looks like it's slightly lower than nine carat. That really is just pure scrap. It's not worth doing anything else with. And the hollow peanut type charm, um, yeah, that also tested at or close to 24 carat. We probably couldn't resell any of those because they probably wouldn't uh, pass UK hallmarking standards. And while I'm at it, it does highlight that when things hallmarked with the UK hallmark, you can reasonably rely on it being accurate. There are fake hallmarks, like there are fake sovereigns and other coins, um, but UK hallmarking is excellent Hallmarking or quality marking in the rest of the world is a bit iffy and uh, often you can't rely on it. Um, I think that's um, about all I need to say. Um, I've mentioned Silver Forum and we'll put a link on there to the page where we talk about that pendant and this video. And now I'll hand back to Ben for him to say goodbye and hit bye from me. But now we know what these items are, we've tested them all, we've weighed them all. We'll be able to get back in touch with Backyard Building and give him all that information across. Don't forget to check out his channel as well. There are some great videos on it. And we'll hope to see you back here for the next video. Thank you.